The New Glenn rocket is a two-stage rocket developed by Blue Origin, the space exploration company founded by Jeff Bezos. It is designed to carry up to 10 metric tons of payload to orbit and is the largest and most powerful rocket currently under development. On January 16, 2025, the New Glenn rocket made its first successful test flight, reaching a maximum altitude of 35 kilometers. However, the rocket's booster stage failed to land safely and was lost at sea. Blue Origin has not yet released the cause of the booster failure, but they are investigating the incident. In the meantime, the company has announced that they will continue to develop the new Glenn rocket and that they are confident that they can make it a safe and reliable launch vehicle. The new Glenn rocket is an important milestone in the development of commercial spaceflight. If it can be made to work reliably, it will provide a much needed boost to the space industry and could help to make space travel more affordable and accessible. In this video, we will take a look at the New Glenn rocket in its first test flight. We will also discuss the challenges that Blue Origin faces in making the rocket a success. Let's dive right in. January 16, 2025. The Florida coast trembled under the roar of the New Glenn rocket as it erupted from the launch pad, a titan of steel and fire ascending towards the heavens. The world watched with bated breath, a collective gasp escaping as the behemoth pierced through the clouds, a silver streak against the azure canvas of the sky. Blue Origin, Jeff Bezos's ambitious venture into space, had finally unleashed its masterpiece. But the euphoria was short-lived. As the new Glenn arced gracefully towards orbit, a chilling silence descended upon the control room. Communication with the booster stage, the heart of the rocket, abruptly ceased. The cheers turned to anxious whispers, the air thick with a sense of dread. Had they lost it? Had all their years of toil, their dreams of lunar colonies and spacefaring civilizations, vanished in a puff of smoke? The hours that followed were an agonizing blur of uncertainty. Engineers huddled around screens, poring over telemetry data, searching for any sign, any flicker of hope. The silence was deafening a stark reminder of the unforgiving nature of space exploration. Was it a catastrophic failure, a design flaw, or simply an unfortunate anomaly? The world held its breath, waiting for answers. Blue Origin, true to their nature, remained tight-lipped. The silence was deliberate, a calculated move to gather all the facts before making any pronouncements. But the whispers continued to swirl, fueled by speculation and anxiety days turned into weeks. The initial shock gave way to a grim determination. The engineers, fueled by a potent mix of grief and resolve, embarked on a meticulous investigation. They combed through every line of code, analyzed every sensor reading, and pieced together the fragments of the lost signal. Slowly, painstakingly, the pieces of the puzzle began to emerge. The first clue, the faint, pale hue of the booster's engines during the re-entry burn. This subtle anomaly, easily overlooked by the casual observer, hinted at a potential problem with the fuel mixture. Was there a leak, a blockage, or perhaps a miscalculation in the fuel flow? The second clue, the shortened duration of the re-entry burn. This suggested a premature shutdown of the engines, further supporting the theory of a fuel-related issue. But what could have caused such a disruption? Then there was the flip maneuver. This dramatic maneuver, a ballet of physics and engineering, was crucial for a successful re-entry. But it also carried inherent risks. The intense forces involved could potentially damage internal components, disrupt fuel lines, or even cause a misalignment of critical systems. Could this be the culprit? The investigation continued each new piece of evidence adding another layer of complexity to the mystery. The engineers, driven by a relentless pursuit of truth, meticulously examined every possible scenario, every conceivable failure point. The pressure was immense, the stakes incredibly high. The future of Blue Origin, and perhaps even the future of human space exploration, hung in the balance. But the loss of the new Glenn booster was more than just a setback for the company. It was a blow to the dreams and aspirations of countless individuals who had poured their hearts and souls into this ambitious project. Years of tireless work, of sleepless nights and unwavering dedication seemed to have vanished in an instant. The engineers, the technicians, the scientists, 
They were not just employees. They were pioneers, explorers, pushing the boundaries of human ingenuity. They had invested not just their time and talent, but their very beings into this endeavor. The loss of the booster was a personal tragedy, a painful reminder of the inherent risks of pushing the limits of human endeavor. Yet amidst the grief and disappointment, a flicker of hope remained. The new Glenn, despite its tragic fate, had demonstrated remarkable capabilities. It had reached orbit on its maiden flight, a testament to the brilliance and dedication of the Blue Origin team. This was not the end. It was a setback, a painful lesson learned, but it was not a defeat. The engineers, fueled by a renewed sense of purpose, vowed to learn from their mistakes, to analyze the data, and to return stronger than before. The new Glenn, they vowed, would rise again. The investigation continued, and slowly, painfully, the truth began to emerge. It was a complex interplay of factors, a series of unfortunate events that culminated in the loss of the booster. There was no single catastrophic failure, but rather a cascade of smaller issues that ultimately proved insurmountable. The lessons learned were invaluable. The engineers, armed with this newfound knowledge, began the arduous task of redesigning, rebuilding, and refining. They meticulously examined every aspect of the rocket, from the engines to the fuel systems, from the software to the hardware. The road ahead was long and arduous, but the spirit of the team remained unbroken. They were determined to overcome this challenge, to honor the sacrifices made, and to fulfill the promise of the new Glenn. Months turned into years. The scars of the past remained, but they were slowly fading, replaced by a renewed sense of optimism. The new Glenn, reborn from the ashes of its predecessor, was a testament to the resilience of the human spirit. It was a testament to the power of perseverance, to the unwavering belief in the future of space exploration. It was a testament to the enduring spirit of human ingenuity. And as the new Glenn, sleek and powerful, once again thundered towards the heavens, the world watched with a mixture of awe and anticipation. This time there would be no silence. This time they would conquer. This story is not just about a rocket. It's about the human spirit, about the relentless pursuit of dreams, about the courage to face adversity and emerge stronger. It's a reminder that setbacks are inevitable, that failures are not the end, but rather stepping stones on the path to success. It's a testament to the power of human ingenuity, to the unwavering belief in the future of space exploration. And it's a call to action, a challenge to all of us to reach for the stars, to dare to dream big, and to never give up on our aspirations. Months turned into years. The scars of the past remain, but they were slowly fading, replaced by a renewed sense of optimism. The new Glenn, reborn from the ashes of its predecessor, was a testament to the resilience of the human spirit. It was a testament to the power of perseverance, to the unwavering belief in the future of space exploration. It was a testament to the enduring spirit of human ingenuity. And as the new Glenn, sleek and powerful, once again thundered towards the heavens, the world watched with a mixture of awe and anticipation. This time there would be no silence. This time they would conquer. This story is not just about a rocket. It's about the human spirit, about the relentless pursuit of dreams, about the courage to face adversity and emerge stronger. It's a reminder that setbacks are inevitable, that failures are not the end, but rather stepping stones on the path to success. It's a testament to the power of human ingenuity, to the unwavering belief in the future of space exploration. And it's a call to action, a challenge to all of us to reach for the stars, to dare to dream big, and to never give up on our aspirations. Now I wanna hear from you. What are your thoughts on the new Glenn and the future of space exploration? Do you believe we will one day establish a permanent presence on the moon? Share your thoughts and insights in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the Elon Musk 24-hour channel for more exciting content on space exploration and technology. Together, let's explore the cosmos and unlock the mysteries of the universe.
Blue Origin's New Glenn made history on January 16th with a successful orbital launch and payload deployment. But in a dramatic turn of events, the massive booster's landing attempt ended with its loss at sea. While reaching orbit marked a triumph, the failed recovery left engineers searching for answers. Fresh analysis has uncovered what likely went wrong in those final moments. From critical engine malfunctions to control system failures that may have saved Blue Origin's drone ship from devastating impact. This is Elon Musk 24 Hours, bringing you the latest developments in space technology. Let's dive right in. The loss of New Glenn's booster wasn't just a technical failure. It was the culmination of a complex chain of events that began long before the landing attempt. At the heart of this story lies the BE-4 engine system, a marvel of modern engineering that performed flawlessly during ascent, but faced unprecedented challenges during its return to Earth. Our analysis points to three critical factors that led to this outcome. The first and perhaps most significant involves the BE-4 engine's performance during the crucial landing phase. These engines, which had successfully powered the massive rocket to orbit, showed signs of strain during re-entry. Engineering data suggests that the extreme temperatures and pressures during the initial flight may have compromised key components within the engine system. The BE-4's design incorporates an intricate network of turbo pumps, fuel lines, and combustion chambers. During the mission's ascent phase, these systems operated in perfect harmony, delivering the necessary thrust to achieve orbit. However, the demands of spaceflight took their toll. The thermal stress from re-entry, combined with the dynamic pressures of atmospheric descent, created conditions that the engines had never experienced during ground testing. A particularly telling moment occurred during the booster's flip maneuver, a critical phase where the vehicle must reorient itself for landing. Telemetry data indicates that the planned 15-second landing burn was cut short. This timing discrepancy proved catastrophic for the landing attempt. Think of it like trying to stop a car with failing brakes. Even a fraction of a second can mean the difference between a safe stop and disaster. But the story doesn't end with the engines. The control system, the brain of the operation, appears to have encountered its own set of challenges. During the descent phase, the booster executed a series of aggressive flip maneuvers that exceeded design parameters. These movements triggered a cascade of internal events that would ultimately seal the booster's fate. Inside the massive rocket, these maneuvers created violent fuel sloshing, a phenomenon where liquid propellants crash against tank walls with tremendous force. This isn't just about spilled fuel, it's about disrupting the precise ballet of fluid dynamics that these rockets depend on. The methane and liquid oxygen, essential for the BE-4's operation, need to flow with exact precision. Any disruption can throw off the entire system. The investigation revealed that these aggressive maneuvers likely damage critical fuel lines and components. Picture a delicate network of pipes and valves being subjected to forces they were never designed to handle. The result? A catastrophic breakdown in the fuel delivery system precisely when the booster needed it most. One of the most revealing aspects of this failure was the turbo pump system's behavior. These sophisticated components, which regulate the flow of propellants into the combustion chamber, showed signs of irregular operation during the final moments. Without proper fuel flow, the engines couldn't generate the necessary thrust for a controlled landing. The irony isn't lost on space industry veterans. The very systems designed to save the booster may have contributed to its demise. The navigation system, which should have guided the booster to a precise landing on the drone ship, instead directed it to an watery grave. In hindsight, this may have been a blessing in disguise. A misguided landing attempt on the drone ship could have resulted in a catastrophic collision, destroying both the booster and the valuable recovery vessel. The investigation has raised serious questions about Blue Origin's approach to reusability. The company's decision to attempt a drone ship landing on the first flight was bold, perhaps too bold. SpaceX, the current leader in reusable rocketry, took years to perfect their landing techniques, starting with simple water touchdowns before attempting ship landings. The pressure on Blue Origin's engineering team is immense. They're not just dealing with technical challenges, they're racing against time and competition. SpaceX has already completed hundreds of successful landings, setting an incredibly high bar for the industry. Every delay in solving these problems puts Blue Origin further behind in the race for reliable, reusable spaceflight. 
The FAA's involvement adds another layer of complexity. Their investigation demands thorough documentation and analysis of every system failure. This isn't just bureaucratic red tape. It's about ensuring future flights don't repeat these mistakes. The lack of clear observation angles during the landing attempt has complicated the investigation, forcing engineers to rely heavily on telemetry data and computer simulations. The path forward isn't simple. Blue Origin must completely redesign their landing procedures, enhance their control systems, and possibly modify the BEVOR engines for better reliability during descent. This isn't just about fixing what went wrong, 